Okay, tip back. Yup. We're on. Good. Okay, rush me, you ready? Alright. Quiet. Let's go, Steve. Alright, um, thanks, guys. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. Can you hear? Well, the ones who can't, can't hear you say no, but anyway, <laughs> we're, we're, we're a bit speaker shy at the moment, we're just sort of sitting under the projector using that speaker. Okay, all right, that's cool. Um, okay, well, uh, my name's Steve Kennedy, I've been down in your club quite a few times, but not for a year or two now, um, and uh, I think I've got up in front of you once or twice before as well, um, Dom, haven't I? I think you might have. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the flex uh, thing we've already done, so that was actually the second half of this, so we'll... we'll 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 sort of look at that when we finish the first half of this um, presentation and uh, see if we feel like uh, going any further. But um, anyway, my name's Steve Kennedy. I'm uh, VK6SJ. Um, I uh, run a company called Future Systems, which is, uh, amongst other things, a uh, um, uh, Australasian um, or Australian New Zealand um, distributor for uh, Flex Radio, and uh, we're also an ICOM. <laughs> Um, dealer these days, um, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, comment. Uh, you do codan. Sorry. You do codan. We do codan. We're also a codan dealer. So. Um, yeah. Um, we also sell uh, Hustler, Ted Mtron, um, and Bushcom, which are uh, brands that are based in WA these days. We um, uh, we sell them. We've got an online shop. Um, uh, which is branded uh, DX radio systems. Um, it's been uh, in operation now for about three years. And um, uh, so if you're, if you're looking for a, uh, somewhere to buy stuff and you um, don't mind uh, ordering it in, then um, uh, maybe give, uh, have a look at what we've got. Um, I'm recording tonight, um, uh, which I'll uh, uh, share with Dom. Um, probably tomorrow sometime. Um, I'm sure it'll be a huge file, but uh, so if uh, you want to put it on your website or something like that, that's fine as well. Um, okay. Uh, I won't bore you with too much more about me. Um, we'll hop into the um, the thing. So this, this presentation's in two sections. Um, if you've got questions, just interrupt me and, um, uh, and ask them. Uh, no need to wait till the end of the uh, session. Um, oh, I'm happy to sort of um, DVR a little and go down a few rabbit holes or whatever if you want, uh, that, that's perfectly fine with me. Um, uh, as long as they're nice rabbit holes. <laughs> um, and um, uh, so I've broken it into two sections. The first section is, is really just focused on remote stations in general. It's not just a flex um, uh, advertisement. Um, my goal here actually is to get more, uh, more clubs thinking about uh, shared um, uh, shared remote stations that can be used by the whole club um, and to uh, to generate a little bit of um, exposure to uh, the WIA DX leaderboard um, which has, now has a club section um, uh, that um, I'd encourage everyone to have a look at um, if any of you are on I think there's a couple of you uh, who are on the DX leaderboard is Patrick around is he? Oh well Patrick lives up the coast now oh right okay he's retired up the coast so we don't see him regularly Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's up up towards the top of the the um, leaderboard somewhere. But you can um, uh, now pull uh, in addition to to uh, participating in the DX leaderboard on your own. Um, you can nominate a club, and um, yeah, the club with the most amount of points overall um, wins wins the leaderboard. Which at the moment that probably doesn't mean an yeah, awful Patrick lot. Except, uh, sorry, yeah, Patrick and Dave CZ. Well, yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, what about Nick? Oh, is Nick uh, Nick Hacko in your? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Sort of. Sort of. Comes and goes. Comes and goes. But yeah, he's in our hard area. To, bit hard Washington. to commute from Norfolk, Norfolk Island. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so the second half is uh, really uh, di deep diving into the flex and how, how good it is for as a remote station. Um, I'm happy to, you know, if we get to a point um, in an hour's time where we go, enough, Steve, go to bed, um, then we'll, um, <laughs> we'll uh, I'll just send you the presentation. All right, um, so That's let's get right. into it. Um, oh, where are we? Okay. 
Uh, so um, just talked about that's so the first thing will be on remote stations in general. Um, so why have a club station? Why have a club remote station? Um, I mean, as you're probably aware, most suburban locations these days have just too much man-made noise for, for uh, any reasonable HF comms. Um, also expensive and hard to, to put up a, uh, a decent mast in, um, in, a, in a suburban situation these days. Um, uh, the, you know, the, um, uh, just about every radio these days can connect to a computer, so therefore can be uh, remoted. Um, so it's a lot easier these days, and, and obviously with the internet being a, a definite thing these days, um, uh, you know, it's it's now um, quite an easy thing to uh, to set up a remote station. Um, also, the costs uh, of a remote station can be shared amongst the, all the members of your club. Um, uh, so obviously, you can you can afford a little bit uh, better station when when uh, you've got you know twenty or thirty or more people. Um, contributing towards it. Um, uh, club remote stations, there are quite a few clubs that have their own remote stations these days. You guys do or don't? I'm, I'm presuming you don't, Dom. Um, Negative. Yep, okay. Um, uh, generally, um, most clubs that I know that are, are running one, including Northern Corridor Radio Group that I'm a member of, um, uh, the club stations used um, uh, by members using their own call signs, not not the club's call signs, um, uh, and you know everything that they every contact they make basically is um, is their own contacts uh, for DXCC and all that sort of stuff, ward chasing, um, and clubs uh, can apply for funding for for a facility like this. Uh, we 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 managed to get a fifteen thousand dollar grant for our, our remote station wow. from from Lotto. Um, uh, and it took us about a year, maybe mm -hmm. 18 months to, to organize from when we first started to when we actually got the cash. Um, local government uh, often, quite often uh, tips in a bit. Uh, royalties for regions might be a bit hard in Sydney. Um, uh, and uh, property developer grants um, is another area that we, we've dipped into quite regularly. In fact, pretty much every year we... we um, uh, at Northern Corridor Radio Group, we've managed to get probably one or two thousand out of um, uh, companies like Stockland, um, who just give out you know one 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 or two thousand um, uh, dollars to lots and lots of different um, uh, community um, uh, associations. So something uh, something Does worth looking at for sure. Sorry, sorry. Does your club need to be a charity to accept that? A which sorry. A charity. Does your club need to be a charity? No, no, not at all. Uh, we're not a charity. We're, we're just a radio club, same as you guys are. Um, we did lean on the fact that we do Jota, which is something I know you guys get very involved in. Um, so we, we sort of looked at uh, a lot of the... Um, uh, yeah, we, we sort of talked a lot about uh, our contribution to the community and that sort of stuff. Um, I know you guys are quite community um, orientated, so I think that would uh, that would be a pretty easy, quick story for you guys. Um, lotto grants, uh, you know, um, they got a lot of money to to spend. Um, you know, they obviously spend you know millions of dollars with um, organisations like RFDS and probably Westpac uh, helicopters, uh, a rescue and people like that. But um, you know, uh, fifteen grand, for instance, to to build a you can build a pretty good remote station for that. Um, uh, yeah, is is not not uh, an unreasonable thing for a radio club, particularly a sizable one, to uh, to to request. So have have a look into that. Um, uh, happy to get a bit more information um, from the club. I, I wasn't involved in the actual grant uh, for that one, uh, just the spending of it. Um, uh, but it um, <laughs> it wasn't particularly hard, um, and. Uh, it also gives uh, club members uh, a decent station that they can actually compete um, in, uh, you know, things like DXCC rankings and, and leaderboards and stuff like that. Um, uh, uh, you can um, turn it into another club activity, uh, particularly with the WIA DX leaderboard club section I was talking about before. Um, and uh, competing in contests, you can do the RD and stuff like that. 
um, uh, as a multi-op station uh, with everyone just dialing in from home for their um, uh, their, their section of it, as long as um, uh, transmitter and receiver within 500 metres of each other, which, um, you know, there's uh, there's no no rules against operating remotely, um, uh, you know, for a multi-op um, uh, contest um, uh, activation. So, um, so they're all good things. They're, they're, uh, I, I, certainly I can talk for Northern Corridor Radio Group. I think the club station is probably the most used um, uh, facility uh, or project that the club has ever undertaken, um, including building the station. And the station's pretty awesome, right? So, um, uh, but the um, uh, the remote station was definitely um, probably the biggest bang for our buck that we've we've ever spent. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit in a little bit more detail as well. Um, uh, so things things you might want to think about: um, uh, antennas, directional antennas require remotely accessible rotators. Again, not terribly difficult to do these days. Um, I, my station, I'm using a Green Heron rotator controller um, to control a Yasu um, rotator. Um, that connects to a computer and uh, uh, as a as a com yeah you know, with a com port, and I can just um, uh, access it that way or access it. Um, it's, it's also got the Wi-Fi board in it, so that um, uh, I can connect to it with a web browser, which makes it a lot easier. Um, uh, verticals, uh, verticals are a good a good place to start, um, and they work really good on the low bands. Uh, you know, you put a a, um, a vertical, something like a either a Hustler vertical or um, or yeah, one of the um, Step IR uh, vertical or uh, Ultra Beam verticals all work really well on tin roofs. Um, you get a get a bit of height as well, and um, uh, particularly on forty meters and uh, and thirty meters, they work extremely well uh, and uh, easy to manage because you just connect them to the radio on the road and it'll follow the radio anyway. Um, so you don't need to worry about rotator controllers and stuff like that. Um, uh, and also, you know, they're either ground mounted or mounted on a roof. You don't normally mount a, a vertical on a mast. So even if um, you you haven't got a mast yet, uh, that vertical is pretty good, pretty good option for that. Um, broadband dipoles, um, also easy to put up. Um, uh, you probably want to think about antenna switching um, a lot of amplifiers will do that for you. The SPE uh, range, I don't know how many guys have got SPE uh, amplifiers, but they're uh, particularly good for that. They, um, uh, I think all of their amps have got uh, at least four antenna connections and you can configure them so that when you go to a band, it, it, uh, it switches to the right antenna. Um, uh, there's also some pretty good um, remotely operated uh, switches uh, around. Um, uh, the six, the old six pack that um, some of you might remember, it's been around for ages. Um, ha has a, a LAN controlled um, version these days, and um, and Flex uh, slash four four Oscar three Alpha um, have the antenna genius, which is um, which is actually priced not too bad for what it is, and uh, and and very smart um, connects into into the LAN, and you can um, cascade them as well, so that you could switch more than more than eight antennas if you wanted to. So they're all um, all uh, things with the antennas that uh, that might get your creative juices flowing. Um, uh, I reckon it wouldn't be too many too many clubs around, and even if you looked around your room, you might find that there's somebody who would have an idea or have access to a remote location that's away from the suburbs where you could set up a a, a club remote rather than setting it up at the club itself. Um, and I certainly last meeting, uh, last uh, presentation I did, um, yeah, within about ten min five minutes of discussing all of that, uh, you know, they they had ideas for a site in Northwest Tasmania, so um, uh, I reckon would be a cracker of a site. Uh, power supplies, um, try <laughs> particularly if you're going to use amplifiers, you definitely want to try and uh, uh, get a mains powered site. Um, you can. You can put amplifiers on on solar powered sites. Um, depending on type of amplifier, it can be a little bit problematic, um, particularly from a, a, a current consumption point of view. But also um, powering it up. Um, 
there's a few DC capable amplifiers that are probably worth looking at if you if you are going to go down that path. Um, and you and you need the ability to be able to switch equipment off and on uh, remotely as well. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of ways of doing that, you know, with telemetry and um, you know, there's, there's a million little boxes you can buy on eBay these days that do do exactly that. Um, security, if it's a uh, um, it, particularly if it's a, a remote site that's um, uh, doesn't normally have people around it, um, you probably want to look at uh, CCTV and um, options as well. There's a few companies around that um, that do monitored systems. You just buy the camera and uh, you get the monitoring with it. Um, uh, normally only activated when something moves. Um, uh, you could also look at an outdoor cabinet that has all of the equipment uh, with good quality locks and you know, double skin, that sort of stuff. So it makes it difficult to get into uh, into the cabinet to steal stuff. Um, uh, they're things that you'll, you really want to have a look at as well. Uh, amplifiers. Um, hard but not impossible to do with solar. We just talked about that. Um, you really do want to uh, implement some monitoring of the amplifier. I know the SPE amplifier has, um, uh, most of them have uh, an ability to connect to um, either a, an application on a PC or um, uh, or uh, that, that or a web, uh, web browser type um, of um, uh, connection so that you can uh, one, know that you're, because you, you, you wouldn't want to go over 400 watts, you know, because that'd be illegal. Um, and uh, you need to know when, you, when you're doing that. And also to know whether if something's failed. Um, uh, I've got a, an SPE 1K FA, which is the, like the oldest um, of that range of amplifier. And, um, and they had a, uh, a, an app for a PC that, um, that I could use and, um, and keep an eye on it that way. And, um, uh, with that, and if you if you're having to tune uh, an antenna, you need to to have access to it as well. Um, most solid state amps amps these days um, have a means of remote monitoring, and you probably want to be uh, looking at solid state amps. There are some valve amps that tune themselves, um, uh, but I think the only one I can think of is the um, I can't even remember the name. It starts with an A. Um, Acom. Is it the Acom amplifiers? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, I, our first uh, remote station I had set up for um, for future systems to to show off the flex um, was using a I'm pretty sure it was an Acom two thousand or something like that, um, and that that worked all right. We had we could we could monitor that as well. Um, obviously, you need internet connectivity, so. Um, uh, you need to look at that. Um, if you're going to go down the 4G uh, route, which is generally what most people do, um, you do need to um, look at trying to get a fixed IP address. Um, for, there's, there's a um, bunch of reasons for that. Um, uh, and uh, generally, you can do that if you talk. I know Telstra has one, there, Extranet. I think it's called Extranet so, uh, Services or something like that. Um, there are other ways of doing it without having a fixed IP address. Um, the HFOS network that I gave a presentation to you guys on a few years back um, uh, before we gave that away um, is a bad joke. Um, we were using tunnel routers to access all of the sites. Um, and that's just a little, it's a five or $600 box, but, um, uh, but it does all of the uh, connecting and all that sort of stuff uh, by itself, um, with a with a minimum of configuration, um, you need one one site to have a fixed IP address, um, but it doesn't have to be the remote site. And then there's radios. You need need uh, a radio that's good for uh, for remote operation. Now, obviously, a Flex Six Thousand series good good uh, good choice. I I think it's probably the best. Um, in that area. However, it's certainly not the only one that you can use. Um, uh, most radios manufactured in the last 10 or 15 years have PC connectivity, so it can be, can be remotely controlled using software uh, and services like remote hams. Um, I'll quickly uh, talk about uh, a few uh, uh, sites that I've got access to. Uh, Northern Corridor Radio Group, we, we've, uh, like I said before, we've had a, um, a remote site for about three years now um 
uh, we are using uh, Remote Hams RC Forbes uh, system, which is free, a free um, service. Uh, um, it does quite a lot of stuff, like validates um, users before um, allowing allowing them access to your site, so that not anyone can just dial in and start using it. Um, I believe there are there's a means of restricting um power and that sort of things on a user by user basis so if you've got someone who's a foundation license operator you might not uh, let them use a kilowatt sort of thing um we're using a, an ic7300 um transceiver couldn't couldn't talk them into a flex um uh i'm not that good a salesman apparently um uh we're using an spe 1k5 fa amplifier um uh, step ir um, for 43 to six meters um, on a on about a 30 meter mast and uh, that's using our green heron rotator controller and we've got dipoles for 80 meters and 160 meters so that gives us some um, uh, access to every band from from 163 to six meters we've also got i think i've got it here also got a um an ic9700 transceiver um with a, a yasu azal rotator that's also connected um to a computer um, and we've got Yagi's for 70 SEMs and two meters uh, for satellite operation and, and a vertical for 23 SEMs. So, um, you know, if you, if you go back and look at that, I mean, an IC7300, about $1,600 roughly, uh, um, SPE 1K5 FA, I think is five or $6,000, something like that. Um, Step IR, you can probably pick up secondhand for four or 5,000 of that, that sort of thing, or maybe less than that, actually. Um, a green heron rotator controller is around five or six hundred US dollars, um, and dipoles you just make. So, you know, you can do the sums. It's it's not a it's not a stupidly expensive um, uh, thing, particularly when you um, you know are getting funding uh, for it from uh, from Lotto or someone like that, somewhere like that as well. And it's a club owned um, thing. It's um, it's actually. Yeah, I think most clubs could actually achieve something like this uh, fairly easily. Um, this is what our uh, this is what the user interface of the club's remote looks like. Um, so pretty pretty bland um, uh, skin, but uh, does the job quite nicely. Um, it's got all your normal sort of uh, uh, functions uh, on a screen, a little bit like HRD, I guess. Um, if you look over the right hand side, oh, it's a 1K3 FA, not 1K5. Um, um, where are we? So if you look over the right hand side, you've got uh, all the main statistics for the amplifier. And then below that is the, um, uh, is the rotator. So we can control pretty much everything we need uh, on the site. We can actually control from the one, from the one web page. Um, now this, uh, I, I don't actually use the club remote much because I sort of spent more time getting my own club remote up and running. Um, and when I was putting this presentation together, I thought, oh, I should uh, I should learn how to use the um, the club remote and put that in my uh, presentation, you know? And uh, so I rang up um, the guy in the club that runs the, um, uh, the club station, said, how do I do it? And I think I was on air within about 10 minutes, I guess, from from, uh, oh, I might use a club remote to actually talk to someone on it. So it was pretty pretty easy and intuitive to, uh, to set up. Um, give you another example of a remote station. This is my, uh, my remote station that um, I share with, uh, with three other hams. Um, it's also my demo uh, system that I um, show uh, potential customers and um, uh, you know, usually when I sell a, a flex radio, we normally do uh, Steve's Flex 101, you know, where where the new owner gets to teach me a little bit more about my radio. Um, and uh, uh, I'm using, a, obviously using a flex, um, normally a 6700, but um, at the moment I'm using a 6400 because I've got my 6700 out with the defense company at the moment, having a look at it. Um, and... Um, uh, I'm not using uh, remote hams. We're uh, we're using the um, uh, smart smart link, which is a, a part of the the um, software package that's used for Flex 6700s, which is uh, SSDR, smart smart software defined radio. Um, 
just about to put in a flex power genius amplifier it's um gonna arrive in the next day or two hopefully um uh before that i was using a 1k fa amplifier before i before i toasted the finals trying to transmit on accidentally transmit on ft8 with about 800 watts didn't like it so that's why i got a bigger amplifier <laughs> Now I can run 1500 watts on FD8 if I want. Um, and then uh, we're using a high gain TH5 um, tri band Yagi um, uh, using a green heron rotator controller um, and access that with uh, any desk, um, uh, which is a free, um, yeah, same sort of thing as Team Viewer or that sort of thing. Um, and we've got dipoles up for 80, 40, 30, and 17 meters. And um, and we're just about to put up an ultra beam vertical for 43 to 10 meters. Um, this is what uh, the screen looks like um, from a from a flex radio. Um, uh, I'll have a better shot on this once I've got my flex genius amplifier actually working because that actually comes up on this screen as well. Um, the downside of this compared to um, uh, to um, the remote hams way of doing it is that uh, I need more than one screen really to um, uh, to run the station. Um, I'm using uh, I've got one laptop uh, that has uh, three external screens plus the laptop screen, and that that I find quite um, quite usable. Um, uh, but there's a little bit more functionality uh, available on this than um, than going down the uh, the remote right hams uh, website um uh thing i think um and this uh system is also uh, really easy to use with ft8 um and connecting into your own logbook um and things like that that um that i think is a is a better better way of doing it um uh that's what my um green heron rotator controller interface looks like um it's just just a, a page on any desk and um uh and i can control the um, rotator just the same as if I was actually in the shack. Um, yeah, so any questions on that? No? It'll, um... What's the difference in noise between um, your site there in Perth and the remote site? Um, well, this one's, uh, this, uh, this site here, I, um, I'll just put up my live site. Can you see that now? Yeah. Yes. Yep. I think I've I've actually got the screen. Um, okay. So this is my this is my remote site. Um, it's on a four or five acre property. Um, oh, probably twenty k's north of my um uh, my work location. Um, it's okay. reasonably quiet. Um, this is on it's twenty not, meters. We're so. out of town then. No, yeah, yeah, it's it's from work. It's uh, it's you know about a ten minute drive from from the office, so it's um, it's quite convenient. And do you have to keep online NBN or are you using satellite? How are you? No, we've got What's actually got. Uh, it's one of those sort of semi rural areas where you know his neighbours are dentist and you know and stuff like that. Um, so they've got all of the um, uh, all of the you know the NBNs fibre to the home and all that sort of stuff there, but um uh, so internet access there is quite good but i could do the same thing with a uh with a wireless modem if we, if we really wanted to we just you know um mbn's there so we just use it uh at home is there uh, any particular able... latency problems like when you key down how long before it keys up um it is noticeable um particularly with uh I, i'm not so sure about the remote hams site but i suspect it would be very similar um with this i've had the odd person when i've been talking to someone on on ssb who've said are you using a remote station because they they can you know you it's a bit like a satellite phone you can sort of tell that that there's a delay um yeah. it's uh it's not generally a problem for normal use and so works perfectly fine on ft8 um the um the only times that i've ever had a, a real issue with it has been um uh, when in a contest situation where you you want to get back um, pretty much as soon as the guy takes his foot off the, the uh, PTT, you want to be uh, talking back to him. And that's a matter of um, uh, just starting to transmit 
just a little, you know, a second earlier than you normally would sort of thing and that fixes that problem um yeah the other the other thing is that i'm using the smart link um server that's owned and operated by flex radio um it's in the states so uh the radio is connected to the server in the states and i'm connected to the server in the states so you you've got um a lot of latency that's introduced by just going you know right around the globe um uh, on a constant basis. So uh, one of our next um, projects to, to do is to get rid of using SmartLink and just uh, connecting a VPN. And uh, we're all just going to actually, we're actually going to use tunnel routers. I've just got to get what, find one more tunnel router now. And then, um, uh, and then we'll connect to it directly, which should reduce the latency quite considerably, I think. Um, uh, so yeah, that's, um, um, that's, uh does that answer your question oh yeah fairly well so yeah. you find it's well worth using a remote station compared to using your home station oh yeah for sure um just the noise side of things um uh, is is one thing um i um at home it's a bit hard to show you um what i've got at home but my, my noise level is only probably a, a db or or sorry a, a, an s point or so higher than um uh, out at um, out of um, Stewie's place, but uh, the big advantage here is that we've got lots of room to put up masks and antennas. We don't have to go and apply for permission to do it um, because yeah. it's just not required there. Um, uh, there's four of us contributing to it, so when we when we go to build something, um, uh, you know, the, the money side of it is is you know only 25% of the problem <laughs> um, that, it, that it would yeah. be if I set it up at home and um, and j just having the room um, uh, is, is helpful. But I know a lot of people who have uh, ridiculously high noise levels on um, particularly on 40 metres. Um, and it just depends, you know, like it's just the luck of the draw. I, I happen to live in a suburb um, where the take up of solar is a lot less than, than some other suburbs. It's a... Um, it's a low socioeconomic area, you know. Um, so, um, <laughs> so I have less uh, issues with um, with uh, solar regulators around. I mean, I've got solar in my place, but it, you know, I don't seem to have any issues. Um, yeah. So, um, so from that perspective, uh, it's certainly worthwhile for me. Um, uh, yeah. So. Um, cool. Hmm. So, yeah, Do you find a, maintenance is an issue, um, um, like things that are breaking or need need a bit of a tickle? Well, it's okay if it's only ten minutes up the road, but if we were going to do it, it'd be four hours away. Yeah, um, uh, that's where I, I do know that um, keeping the, our remote station at the club going um, is a bit of a labour of love. Um, uh, quite often you need to sort of get in and reboot stuff um with this uh with with my station um uh, it's actually quite reliable um luckily uh stewie stewie one of the owners of the of the station also lives there so you know i can ring him up and wow. he can just go and and um reboot something but it, i actually don't need to do it very often um uh, most of the things i can do um, separately, and there's a few other tricks you can do too that like, that we did with our um, when we had our remote sites um, for HF Oz. Um, uh, if if you're relying on a uh, one, one, the first thing is if you can find a way of not having a PC on site, you're going to be streets ahead. Um, PCs ah. are the most unreliable part of a um, uh, of your station that you'll ever have, you know. So. Um, if you can get a, if you can get away from that now, if you're using a, a, a flex radio, um, uh, you don't need a computer on site at all. Um, uh, it just connects to the internet and connects to Smart Link, and and then I connect to it from here. Um, my internet connection that I'm using right now is it, it is the NBN, but it's fibre to the node. Um, I'd be really lucky if I was getting 10 megabits, um, and it's ample for what I, I'm using here. I mean, I'm running the Zoom session and connected to my radio at the same time. Um, uh, so, um, uh, you know, that's, um, 
you, uh, your connection for your remote sites. Um, if you can, if you can get one or two meg, that's 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 going to be ample. So uh, if you can get rid of computers, that's a good thing. Um, uh, if you set your computer up so that if you lose power, it uh, boots up as soon as power comes back on. Um, then what you can do is use a, uh, you know, those little timers. Um, you can uh, PowerPoint timers that you can um, uh, turn a PowerPoint on at, on and off at uh, particular times. You set one of those up to turn off at midnight and turn back on at one minute past midnight. Um, it shuts down your PC and reboots it, right? Um, at a time where it's probably not being used much, you could make that midday instead of midnight if you want, you know? Um, and yeah, so you, if you get a, if you, if you get something hangs up um, and needs rebooting, well, the, the longest you're gonna have to wait is that, that 24 hours. And I suppose you could do it every six hours or something if you wanted to, instead of every 24 hours or whatever, but depending on how reliable it is, uh, your, your equipment is. Um, uh, the ability to uh, isolate power to um, individual devices, I think is um, is also something that will assist you in, in not having to drive all the way out to a site. Um, uh, I know the Flex has a um, actually has a remote power switch um, in the back of it that you can um, uh, you can use to um, remotely reboot the radio. Um, we have we're, we're not using that at this site. Um, uh, it, I have I've had to do a couple of trips up to Siri's place. You know, usually, like five minutes before Jota starts or something like that, uh, when he's at work and uh, and I need something done. Um, and having a remote on and off would have fixed that problem. Um, uh, and then, you know, if you can isolate uh, power, there's quite a lot of devices around now that can isolate two, uh, 240 volts to individual uh, pieces of equipment as well if you needed to. Um, amplifiers generally don't need much in the, in the way of rebooting. <laughs> Pretty rare to, um, to need to do anything there. Radios, uh, occasionally. Um, computers regularly. Um, certainly our Green Heron rotator controller, I've not had to do anything with that ever. Um, it's just worked rock solid. About the most I've ever had to do is um, restart the web browser. Um, yeah. Um, hmm. So I suppose uh, one of the big things, I guess, is, is, uh, is keep it as simple as you can manage. Um, you know, if you if you've um, you know using verticals and stuff like that, it's just gonna yeah. You know, the less equipment you've got out there, the more reliable your station's gonna be. Um, but obviously, there's a point where you go, well, you know, you 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 want an amplifier, um, and uh, and sooner or later, a vertical's not gonna do it for you anymore. You know, but um, uh, but if you put a bit of effort into it, you can you can get the system pretty reliable. Hmm. Um, uh, the, the next part of my presentation was one that I've actually already done with you guys in the past, uh, which is the flex one. And I'm happy to do that or not. It's up to you guys. Um, or I could just I'll take you a, through this. Have, or... have a do a quick run through. Yeah. Run through. Maybe I'll just life. take you through um, uh, this now with a live, a live um, thing. And I'll just put a few, uh, show you a few things um, uh, that are probably pertinent to um uh to yeah remote stations or um um uh or uh contest stations as well you guys do many contests apart from the rd ah oh, look it's a bit random um we tend to do the 160 voice uh, we quite enjoy that one um yep. john moyle um and and we're not really going gung ho it's more the more the outing than anything else yeah Yep. But uh, yeah, they're the big ones. And then there's a couple of, a couple of club members just wandering in our contests as I go. Yeah, okay, cool. VHF, UHF will be coming up. We'll yep. be in that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like the RD. That's my favourite contest. Right. It's a goodie. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I've won RD, a few times. RD tends to be with the lighthouse. Yeah, we tend to do lighthouse instead of RD. Oh, yeah, okay. Because we've yeah. got a bloody good lighthouse. Yeah. 
I've, I've done the RD from a lighthouse, but we came like ninth overall, which is like the worst score I've ever had. <laughs> so, <laughs> this lighthouse is a stupid idea. <laughs> so, but they put it on the same weekend. I don't do the lighthouse. Uh, um, yeah. Anyway, um, uh, so um, this is a flex. Um, this is a flex operating um, uh, software. It's called Spart SDR. Uh, SSDR. Um, it's uh, free and managed by Flex Radio themselves. It's uh, it's updated probably every couple of months. Um, uh, and the way that the Flex Radio is designed, um, uh, the hardware virtually never changes. Um, so all of the work that happens on um, on the Flex is done in software. And to to put this in perspective, I think uh, the you guys were one of the first clubs I ever got in front of with the Flex Radio, and and I think there were a couple of Flex owners in there who knew a lot more about the radio than I did at the time. Um, uh, I've had a lot more of a play with it since then, um, but the differences in how the radio works now and uh, compared to then is just huge. Um, uh, a few of the things that uh, a few of the major things that have uh, uh, been developed since then is um, one is uh, uh, remote operation, uh, like we're using right now. Um, um, I have a smart link that came with version two. Um, during version two, also they um, uh, brought in this ability to put spots on the um, on the pan adapter. So up here you can see a couple of um, um, a couple of uh, call signs. These are um, uh, yeah. I'm actually using uh, N1MM. Um, uh, as the um, spotting software. Um, so that's logged into V7CC's, um, um, whatever you call it, cluster. Um, and that's broadcasting uh, spots on a, um, uh, on a multicast address, which the um, uh, radio or the software actually, SSDR is actually... Um, um, uh, reading and then applying that information to the um, to the screen. So not not rocket science, but um, uh, and something I learned during um, uh, during the CQ Worldwide contest we did about a month ago um, is that uh, we were using N1MM as our contest software as well, and we're actually using a Flex 6400 at the club as our um, multiplier chaser because uh, we did a multi one um, uh, entry and. Um, and uh, N1MM broadcasts um, and Flex Radio is able to display different color um, uh, spots depending on whether it's a new multiplier or whether it's a multiplier, uh, a country multiplier as well as a zone multiplier. It came up with a different color again and it all brings it up on the screen here. So I could actually just uh, double click on um, on spots that we knew were new multipliers and um, um, yeah, just made it really easy to chase them. So. No um, wonder you complain about coming nine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, so that's uh, that's one of the cool things. Um, uh, one of the other things that um, uh, came out with version three is um, uh, is the ability for more than one um, more than one uh, operating interface on the same radio. So I'm just I'm just using um, or connecting into the. Uh, radio using my iPhone app as well, um, which I'm just doing now. Um, but one of, the, one of the advantages, just just going back, um, I'll just turn the volume down a bit. One of the advantages of remote hams compared to doing it this way is remote hams. Yeah, you, you, you could have your entire club um, membership. Um, uh, listening in on someone working someone uh, whereas with uh, with this uh, smart SDR the maximum you can have is two um, two users uh, at any one time mm -hmm. so if you look down the bottom right hand side of the screen now you've got multiflexes there now that's there because um, there's another application also uh, independently con um, uh, connected to um, to the radio so um, at the moment I've got an iPhone app which you can sort of so here, just a bit hard to... Yeah, yeah, we know you got it. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's connected completely independently to this and whoever whoever presses the PTT uh, gets the transmitter for the time being. So if I um, 
Um, oops. Where are we paying it up? You see down the bottom right hand corner um, how that TX went sort of a funny color. Um, that tells you that the other the other person's uh, got the transmitter at the time for the time being. Um, we'll just get off this frequency in case there is actually someone there. Um, uh, when I transmit. Um, uh, comes up with a uh, red background and white um, uh, white lettering instead of the opposite when when the other guy transmits and uh, and on my iPhone app um, I get a, a, um, a part of my screen goes red to to tell me that the other guy's um, uh, doing it. Now the other thing you can do is um, is connect. I'll just um, disconnect and connect again. You can connect this so that it's actually in uh, in parallel, so that I'm actually in parallel. In other words, um, I'm remotely um, connected to. Um, so you can see how how I'm. Uh, so the frequency is changing now. Um, I'm actually changing that frequency on the screen with my iPhone. So now my iPhone is sort of like a parallel. Um, uh using the same session if you like um but but using my um uh my um iphone instead where that really comes into its own is if you're um if you're using uh say a um uh a maestro um to control your um uh your radio um but you, but you really like the big, the big screen and all that sort of stuff. You can actually um, have both your computer and your uh, maestro connected to the radio at the same time, and so you've got all the knobs and everything from the maestro, but you've still got uh, the the real estate on a screen, um, like like you have when you connect to it with the computer. So um, yeah, um, other features that are really cool: um, tracking uh, uh, notch filter. Um, this has been around for um, quite a while. Uh, where are we? Where is it? Um, you can control the width with the mouse. Um, now, what this does is it allows you to um, to notch out a a, um, a particular signal or whatever, and it and it stays notched out regardless of where your um, where your VFO is. Right. And you can vary the width of that as well, um, to the point where you could actually notch out an FT8 signal if you wanted to. Um, uh, so that's that's one of the features, and um, that I, I find really really nice. But the other feature I um, I really enjoy um, uh, with this radio is the um, is the filtering. So we we go down here. You can actually adjust the filtering um, here using. Um, uh, using preset um, things, or you can just grab the mouse and drag the filter. And anything that's outside of that filter, you just don't hear on the radio. It's as simple as that. Um, let's see. So, uh, that's probably not such a good. I can hear that um, tone. No. Now it's gone. We don't hear the tone oh, anyway. Oh, okay, yeah. Ah, there it is. I oh, know you watch this. <laughs> it's just gone completely, you know. Like it's uh it's what what we call a brick wall filter. In other words, it's a square filter. It's not a it's not a bell curve or anything like that, you know. Um so really, really cool from that, which is in a contest situation, it's, it's really so valuable, it's not funny. Um, all right. um, some of the other stuff that I like with it, um, the CW, um, uh, where are we uh, set up? So, um, uh, so this is all flex radio stuff, nothing to do with the remote. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's all flex stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So, um, uh, and this is actually quite handy when you're using a remote station because one of the problems with a remote station is um, how do you plug your key in if you're doing CW, right? Well, 
uh, this radio does it quite nicely. Um, uh, and pretty much, um, you know, a computer keyer is is almost the only way that you can do it. With the Flex, if you're using a Maestro, um, uh, you can plug a key into that and use it like a normal um, thing. I don't want to build a, a box that does it and sell it, but um, uh, I'm a little way away from doing that. Um, yeah, just to, to get away from the Flex side of things for a sec, um, uh, I'll just show you. Let's get any desk up. Um, so this is um, connecting to the remote site. Um, so there's my um, rotator. Um, I'll just refresh the screen because it seems to need that um, when you haven't touched it for a little bit. So I um, want to change the rotator. Just um, drag it around. Um, so that's pretty easy to use. And uh, obviously, you don't need to be looking at the rotator all the time. Um, but it's also got these really cool little um, um, sure. presets as well. So you can, you can get your um, uh, rotator going to where, where you want it, um, that sort of thing. And this is really easy to set up. Um, I actually had it set up. Initially, I set it up with a DIN DNS server as well because um, I had an account still um, from from the uh, HF Oz days. And um, uh, so I had it set up so that I could actually access it from any web browser anywhere. Um, and um, uh, uh, so I could even get, you know, use my phone and um, and uh, I just just uh, had to use use my normal web browser to um, to go straight to the, the website that the DNS server uh, pointed the, um, uh, the controller to. Uh, I managed to let that account lapse, so uh, I don't have that anymore. So I just use any, uh, you know, any desk um, has got phone apps as well, so I can still get on um, on my phone and um, and move the antenna if I really want to. If I don't want to do it this way, um, this being the computer that's also connect, this computer is also connected to the um, to the radio, so um, I can I can access the radio directly. Um, locally uh, with this as well. Um. So Steve, is Green Heron the software and a hardware box at the other end? Um, it's it's a, a Green Heron uh, is a company in New York that makes um, rotator controllers. Um, and they're, they're a generic controller. So they, um, hang on, I'll just get out of that. Um, uh, you can connect it up to virtually any rotator. Um, right. They do sell bundles. Um, I, if, if I'm buying a um, a new, um, let me get out of that. If um, if I'm buying a new uh, rotator and controller for a customer, we, we do quite a quite a few um, insurance jobs. Um, then I usually talk the customer into getting a getting a bundle. It costs us about eight or nine hundred US dollars or something for a, a high end Yasu rotator like a twenty eight hundred and a and a Green Heron controller. And then if you if you get the um, Wi-Fi um, board with the um, rotator controller, it's about an extra hundred and twenty dollars or something like that. Um, then you can connect the rotator controller to your um, uh, to your Wi-Fi network on the um, on the site. It just makes it a lot easier to connect to, um, which is how we connect to it um, in this system. Um, uh, but there are other rotator controllers that have um, the ability to connect to a computer, for instance. Um, uh, I think Yasu have a, a, a an option on some of their rotator controllers that do the same sort of thing. Um, that's what we're using for our club remote for the um, uh, the VHF UHF station uh, to control the um, azimuth elevation rotator for satellite use. So. Um, um, yeah, all, all pretty easy to do. Um, yeah, any other questions? Well, we'll try and sell us some Flex Radio. Okay. <laughs> um, well, that's just about my favourite subject. So, um, 
Um, are you all familiar with SDRs in general? Or, the crowd uh, here, probably not. We're, we know what they are, but we don't use them. Right, okay. Well, oh, then, okay, we'll, Greg we'll, does. Yeah, we'll start, start from the start then. Um, uh, this is, I think I, this is part of the, the original one I, I gave you guys a, a few years ago, but it was probably four or five years ago now. Um, so software defined radios are, are becoming mainstream these days. Um, uh, there's a whole bunch of, you can, you can buy, um, you know, 10, 10 to $20 kits that, uh, that'll do, you know, HF receiving, uh, with a software defined radio, um, you got your Apache Labs, which is a uh, is probably um, uh, one of Flex's biggest competitors. Um, uh, Elad, um, which is a, a Eastern European company, I think, um, that are making a quite a good um, software defined radio. Icom, uh, most new Icom radios now are software defined. Um, Yasu are in the same boat. Um, obviously, Flex Radio, um, and there's plenty of others uh, around too. A whole bunch of Chinese brands now that are doing the same sort of thing. Um, so different approaches, um, uh, PC sound card based. Um, uh, so using a sound card to convert from analog to digital and digital to analog. Um, this is what's generally used by uh, Softrock and other simple QRP uh, receivers and transceivers. It's cheap and cheerful, um, and it's good fun for learning about the technology. Um, and uh, if you've got something like a um, an old Yasu, um, FT2000 or something like that, they, um, uh, you could buy a, a, a 10 meg um, IF board that would um, bring your IF out on um, um, out as a um, 10 meg um, IQ and, um, output and you could connect that to a, a, a simple software defined receiver and, um, and build yourself a pan adapter for, um, for a radio that, uh, you know, that came out long before uh, pan adapters did. Uh, good for experimenting and that sort of stuff. Um, uh, then there's uh, your A to D and D to A conversion carried out in the radio with the processing carried out by a PC. Um, this is what Apache Labs do. Um, it's what Flex did in their uh, earlier versions, the 1500 and the 3000 and the 5000 series radios all did that. Um, uh, it uses open source software. Um, one of those is Power SDR, which was the first um, SDR software that, that Flex uh, uh, developed. They've since um, given uh, the rights to that to someone else. Uh, well, I think I've just made it open source and there's a few people around who are continuing to develop it, but it's not something done by uh, Flex anymore. Um, and very much in the spirit of amateur radio and sharing ideas and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, a to D and D to A conversion um, processing and and user interface embedded in the radio. Um, uh, so the at FPGA is doing the processing. Um, this is generally a lot more reliable and better performing. Um, you're not relying on the on the quality of your PC. Um, yeah, no point in having a uh, yeah a one thousand dollar radio if uh, if you need to buy a five thousand dollar computer to run it. Um, uh, my PC that I'm using right now um, for this presentation and what I normally use in the shack for um, using my flex radio is, is a, I think cost me about $150. So it gives you an idea of the, the um, standard. I think it's an i5 comp um, computer and um, not, not, it's certainly not a gaming computer or anything like that. Um, uh, this is pretty much what, um, uh, what ICOM and Yasu are doing now. Um, so it's, it's a software defined radio. It's sitting inside a, a box that on the outside looks exactly like a normal radio. Um, most commercial manufacturers of radios are also developing radios in this fashion these days. Um, and then there's, um, uh, A to D and D to A conversion and processing carried out in the radio, but the PC or an external console um is just a gui just a, just a graphical user interface so your computer is not doing all the muscle work it's uh, it's all done inside the radio as well um, this is the flex 6000 um, series approach uh, it's a very powerful and robust platform um, it requires a lot less ip bandwidth than um, 
than say uh, um, an Apache Labs radio does where, where all the grunts done in your computer. Um, and uh, it allows the radio to be used really easily with a, with a phone or a, a tablet uh, remotely. Um, uh, it also uh, leans very uh, nicely towards um, uh, additional features. So to, to put it in perspective, my Flex 6700 I use normally um, was one of the first ones to come out. Um, so it was probably, well, I bought it secondhand, um, but it was probably brought out in uh, 2015 or something like that. Um, and it has every single feature that a brand new 6700 I sell today has. There's no difference whatsoever. So the features I've got now are like, it's like I get a new radio every two or three months. Um, and, and to me, that's that's a really powerful thing. It's something you don't get with um, with any of the other brands. Um, um, so if you're gonna look at um, uh, Flex 6, 6000 series radio, why do you do that? Well, up until just very recently, um, it was the best performing um, uh, HF radio in the amateur market. Um, I think the 101 DX or whatever it is uh, um, has just uh, knocked it off um, the, the top spot, uh, but there's not much in it. It's, um, it's still a very, very good receiver. Um, and when you compare it to yeah, even a Flex 6700, oops, um, Tolomores are going to be in this meeting. Um, so when the um, uh, um, uh, what was it? I've lost track of what I was talking about now. Um, yeah. So um, if you look at the top of the range, Icom radio, uh, I think they're about fourteen, fifteen thousand, something like that. Um, uh, the um, top of the range Yasus, I think a similar sort of price um, the top of the range 6700 uh, Flex uh, 6000 series radius is 6700 which is about 12 grand um, but the, the difference in performance between a 6700 and a 6600 which is like five or six thousand um, dollars is quite minimal um, in fact it's not really the, the receiver quality that um, uh, that you're paying for it's additional slices and things like that um so it does make the radio quite good value for money um and the filtering in it um exceeds anything that um any of the other um, um manufacturers do with a conventional filtering so um api is available so um anyone that wants to play around with um uh, you know, different operating interface and things like that um, uh, can um, download a, an API from Flex and um, control a radio using other stuff. Um, um, it's very, very easy to operate remotely. Um, you're basically connected to the internet. Um, you've got to set up port forwarding on, um, uh, on your modem uh, that's used at the remote station uh, to make sure that, that those uh, the ports that we use for um, connecting to the radio uh, flow through. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, you connect another device, your, your user interface to the internet, um, and that's it. There's no VPNs or anything like that. You just you put them both on the internet and you can access them from anywhere. So it's just that easy. It's um, You don't need to be an expert in IT or anything like that to get it up and running. Um, I guess some of the things I really like about, I'll, I'll just go back to the, um, uh, to my radio. I'll get rid of that. Um, there's two packages that are installed when you also, or when you run um, Smart SDR. You've got Smart SDR Cat and Smart SDR D, uh, DAX. What these are, the DAX is, um, is how we do our, how we get audio out of the radio. Um, uh, so we can stream on, this is a 6400, so I can only stream two, two at a time. But um, at the moment, I'm uh, continuously uh, streaming um, uh, slice A to, um, uh, to our DAX or digital audio uh, voice stream number one. And then when I'm running WSJT software, um, 
uh, I've got that connected so that it connects directly to the um, uh, to the stream. So I've got no cables or anything like that going between the computer and the radio. It's just all done via via IP. Um, same thing with the CAT um, software. This is what allows you to set up different COM ports, so you can have as many COM ports as you want on uh, on this. Um, uh, so I've got a COM port connected to, oh, I've, I've turned most of the stuff off now, um, but if I turn HRD on, um, just running that up now, uh, you'll see it'll connect to one of one of these COM ports, can't remember which one. Um, uh, what's going on? Why isn't HRD running? Um, and then if I ran N1MM, um, it also connects to a separate COM port of its own. Uh, so you don't, you don't have to run any other additional software um, to allow multiple devices to connect to the one radio. Um, this just allows uh, lots of devices to be, to be connected to, uh, to the one radio um, really intuitively. So um, uh, the other good thing about this is that when I'm running my logbook, uh, which is just about to boot up, um, it's all connected directly to the radio, even though the radio is remotely. Um, so I don't have to manually put in frequency and mode and all that sort of stuff. Um, that's another advantage of using this compared to um, compared to the uh, remote the remote uh, hams um, um, method. Um, now, if I run up WSJT, I'll just run that up now. Um, sorry, wait a second. Uh, where is that? Is that your uh, name again, too? <laughs> sorry? Here we go. <laughs> It's a bit slow. I'm running a lot of stuff at the moment on this one little computer. Um, it's struggling. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, it's a bit slower than it normally is, I've got to say. Um, yeah. You've got your money's worth. Yeah. Press the turbo button. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think. Right, so now I'm connected to. Um, Uh, let's go back here. Put in digital for the DAX, and then back to um, okay. So now I've got um, uh, WSJT connected as well. Um, so you can see over here, um, it's it's looking at uh, audio stream. The audio stream that's connected to um, um, uh to slice a on the on the radio um let's have a look here uh, yeah. yeah it's it's struggling a bit with um running a zoom session as well it's, it's um it's not ideal but um we believe you yep yeah so um uh, it's really easy to, yeah, like the, the way I'm connected to it now is exactly the same way as I'd be connecting to it if I was locally, uh, if, if the radio was right next to me. So it's really intuitive to use like that. I don't need to to um, to do any other sort of smart stuff. Um, running um, uh, FT8 on, on, a, on our club remote um, isn't possible at the moment. I think there is a way of doing it, but um, uh, but it's, it's a bit more convoluted. Um, we've got a flex 6400 at the club and i've been trying to talk them into looking at using that um uh instead of the ic7300 but, I, but um but, uh i don't use it much anyway so i don't really care and and um and there's a bit of reluctance by some of the club members but uh probably got more to do with politics than anything else um yeah so um there you go so maybe um uh hope that if you're looking for a new radio you might consider this one as a as an option um 
a, a few things that have come out recently um uh since last time i spoke to you guys about it um obviously the 64 and 6600s have come out since then which are um uh, have you know knobs on the front for those that like that sort of thing um it's got its own yeah. little pan adapter on a seven inch screen um and um uh, where are we let's get back to this um where are we uh so um so I'll, I'll start that again so 6400 um is um is the entry level radio it's what i'm using for remote radio at the moment um has pretty much all the same features as the 6700 the only difference mainly is that there's only one uh spectral capture unit in a 6400 which is the um the main a to d and d to a uh conversion um it, you only get two pan adapters and, and two slices um and uh you have to buy the uh, optional atu if you want an atu on the radio and then only it'll only um uh, span a maximum of seven megahertz um uh you know big deal um uh funnily enough only having two slices um now that i'm used to using the 6700 i find that a little bit limiting um but but if you're used to just using a normal ham rig uh, most ham rigs only have two two vfos anyway you know um 6400 uh, sorry 6600 is um is the next uh, model up um uh they're around six i think they're about six eight now i think we just had to put the price up um uh gives you four pan adapters um instead of just two it has two spectral capture units so you can run full duplex with two separate antennas um if you wanted to on two separate bands um uh it has a a, a pre-select filter uh, built in which is really good um uh you can do up to 14 megahertz on one um one pan um has a integrated atu as a standard um has a balanced microphone input uh, which is handy for connecting studio mics and stuff into it um uh what else um front end pre-select pre i think i already talked about that um yeah 6700 which is the top of the range radio it's a lovely rig um uh yeah eight eight pan adapters um uh yeah um it's actually pretty good value for money when you compare it with the other top end um radios um but it has two meters as well but admittedly it's only six milliwatts uh output so you you've got to run it into like two or three amplifiers to get a decent signal out but it's really designed to be used with um uh, with two meter transverters um and it works quite nicely for that um uh eight slight slices and it's a slightly smaller form factor than the uh, 6600 um funnily enough the 6600 is what we sell the most of uh i reckon uh we would sell two 6600s for every 6400 we sell um and the 6700 sells about the same as the 6400 uh we um uh we get a surprising um, high amount of um, sales in 6700s, but it's probably about the same as our 6400 uh, radio. Maestro, bit of a sore point at the moment. I haven't been able to get these for about 18 months now, and I've still got two on order. Um, they'll be out uh, finally in the early stages of next year. Um, uh, they got bitten by the, um, the same problem a lot of other electronics companies have. Um, um, and the display has been a bit problematic um i think this has really come into its own since they uh, brought out the um, latest version of um uh of smart sdr where you can actually parallel the maestro with um the computer gui um to me that's that's now made the maestro something i wouldn't mind having in my shack whereas before i used to think it was just you know <laughs> I, I i very rarely sell them and um because i yeah I, i'm just not into that i much prefer the computer but um but having both um i think uh on the one as, as the one operating interface i think is is quite uh quite nice to have um this is a lovely piece of kit i'm really looking forward to getting mine which is happening in the next day or two um uh 
Power Genius 1.5 kilowatt amplifier. Um, will do up to 2,000 watts on SSB on, on particular bands, so or that's rated to one and a half. Um, um, it's fully integrated with the, the Flex Radio um, 6000 series radio, so you can um, monitor it from the same software. Um, it's got two uh, inputs and outputs. Uh, each input, like input one is mapped straight to uh, output one and input two is mapped to output two. So you can run, um, uh, you can actually run two two radios uh, into the Flex. Obviously, only one can transmit at a time. Um, but uh, the amplifier just switches between the two and there's like 70 dB of isolation between um, between the inputs so that you, um, you, you're you not going to uh, do any significant damage to your um to your radio uh, your radio that's not transmitting um so it's it's a true single operator two radio um setup um and uh it connects to the flex 6000 via the lan um so there's no other cables there's no ptt and uh alc and all that sort of stuff it's all all just done via uh, via the lan and it's rock solid um you know uh uh, you can you can run one and a half kilowatts on FT8 if you lived in a country that allowed that. So um, yeah. I'll only test that into a double load, of course, because I would never break the law. Um, there's another uh, really handy little thing. Um, uh, we pretty much sell one of these with every radio we sell. It's a yeah, flex control. It's like a little. Um, let's see if I can show it to you on here. <laughs> That's the sort of size of it in in a hand, but it's a um, uh, it's a little VFO um, um, a device that just connects into the uh, mouse uh, into a USB port on my laptop, um, and uh, that's actually my PTT switch uh, when I'm operating remotely. I just I've got auxiliary one um, set up as a PTT. You, uh, the three buttons are um, are all programmable. Um, as is the the big uh, knob in the middle, uh, although normally you would leave that on VFO, um, and a, and the knob actually has a press button on it as well. So there's four four buttons that are um, uh, that are user programmable to um, to whatever um, whatever function you want. So it's really handy for yeah using as a VFO and that sort of thing. I think it's it's about all all I really feel like I need for um, um, for operating the radio normally. So. Um, so how much is the amp, Steve? Uh, the amp, uh, not cheap. Um, uh, Twelve two fifty, I think. Um, yeah, uh, but um, uh, it's it's known already to be a very reliable amplifier. Um, uh, it's also I, I've, I've been hearing lots of rumours about. Um, the SPE amplifiers lately um, that that are a bit concerning. I, that's not something I ever expect to see happen with a with a flex product, uh, regardless of what it is. Um, one of the reasons why um, we really enjoy working with flex is that their their customer focus is really really top notch, you know, um, which sort of sits well with us too because that's how we like to operate. Um, it's got a tuner built into it. Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, uh, it doesn't have a tuner built in and doesn't have antenna switching built in. They're, they're things that you've got to buy extra. Um, I would, when I first looked at that, I thought, oh, that's a bit, you know, that that's probably a, um, something that would stop me from buying it. But then, then I sort of think about it a little bit more and I think, well, if I'm running one and a half kilowatts, I want a resonant antenna anyway. Right. And all my antennas are actually resonant, so I actually don't use a tuner in my um, my SPE one KFA. Um, and if you think you can operate a non-resonant antenna at one and a half kilowatts, you, you're going to, um, you know, there are issues with that, particularly in, um, in you know you, you get hot spots in your coax line. Um, you know, you'll melt um, traps on a on a trapped antenna and things like that. I don't, I've done all of that. Um, uh, that was one of the first things I learned when I started using amplifiers was that you got to get, uh, you got everything, everything's, you've got to spend twice as much time getting everything right. So the tuner for me is not an issue. I'm not, I've got no plans to buy one myself. Um, I've got a couple on order for customers, but, um, uh, that's about it. 
um the antenna switch though is something i do miss so i think it would have been really good to to integrate that in but um but flex do have a pretty good um eight port um selector which um i'm planning on getting from my station in the next few months or maybe six months or something like this but probably about um i think they're about 800 odd us dollars or something like that um but it's LAN connected and um and it's it's an eight port switch so it's you know it's a lot more than any amplifier i know of um uh and you can cascade them too so if you've got more than eight antennas you can um you just buy a couple of switches and you can connect them together and they and i'll um yeah it'll become a 16 um port um uh, switch instead of a, an eight port so uh oh, what yeah. have we got left there sorry what have we got left in the presentation oh that's pretty much it um you yeah, got man. any special deals for us step uh, well, right up step right up yep there is a um um you're going to send me a list of attendees right and yep. um and i'm going to send you a whole bunch of 50 dollar vouchers um, yep, right up. that you can use in the next couple of months for anything you buy from us not just um uh not just flex products but um we have quite a good range of products as you well know um yep. given that you sold me a lot of them um and um yeah so uh oh, yeah there's also um we i think we've just released um uh there are um deals at the moment for i hate to call it but the black friday sales um uh for the rest of this month oh, yeah. um uh i'd have to have a look at um i i, I don't do the the marketing for flex it's all done by one of my staff but um but we are offering the same discounts in australian dollars obviously as um uh as flex uh, and so i know the 6600 i think is something like six or seven hundred dollars off at the moment um so okay. if, if you were teetering on the edge of buying a flex radio right now is a pretty good time to do it um uh i think we also do a i think there's also a bundle deal um with the amplifier and the 6600 as well uh, i'd have to check on that so we'll take that yeah <laughs> yeah take a dozen <laughs> yeah not a problem <laughs> <laughs> right other i'll send you that list overnight yeah yep no problems well thanks very much for having me guys um yeah, uh, thank you, Steve. Sorry, I couldn't Steve, be there in person. Thank you. We look forward to visiting again. Yeah. When you're on the present.